Hello, and welcome to Community Pulse. Community Pulse is a public affairs show on CAN TV about public health and wellness in Chicago. Uh, today, our guest is the head of the New Vecinos program at the New Life uh, Centers, Andre Gordillo. Yeah, thank you for having me. Okay, thank you for coming here. Um, first, I have some housekeeping to do. Okay, um, Community Pulse is a public affairs show about public health sponsored by the Hectone Institute of Medicine. Uh, Hectone has been uh, not-for-profit uh, in the public health sector for 80 years. And it also sponsors the Fox Glove Alliance, a coalition of 15 public health organizations that I coordinate. Uh, Community Pulse is a production of the Fox Glove Alliance that is done in conjunction with the Healthcare Council of Chicago and Hectone's Nurses and Humanities Program. So with that out of the way, we're going to get to the heart of the show. Uh, let me frame this for you a little bit. Okay. Um, New Life Centers are essentially you know, a faith-based institution, but New Life does more than feed the spiritual soul. Uh, it gets involved in numerous ways that address the needs of communities in big cities. And what we're going to talk about some is like what New Life does, uh, where it operates at, but then also, um, well, one of the issues that we're going to address as the year goes by on Community Pulse, um, the migrant um, asylum seeker situation in Chicago. Uh, we're not going to get into the politics of it or the Night in My Backyard issues of it. We're going to look at this is how a Chicago social service faith-based organization is stepping up to assist these people that seek a better life. So with that as a setup, um, well, let's start off just to let people know who you are, Andre. Yeah, thank you. That was well said. Uh, my name is Andre Gordillo, the program director of the New Vecinos program at New Life Centers. Uh, like you mentioned, we have many other departments and, and teams. And so my team that I'm in charge of is the uh, care for of all the new arrivals that have mm -hmm. come into Chicago. So within the past 18 or 20 months, there's been about 38, maybe close mm -hmm. to 40,000 and, and probably more unaccounted for. Uh, but about 38,000 new arrivals that have entered Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, seeking a better life. Mm -hmm. And New Life Centers, my team, the new vecinos, we call them, uh, we're in charge of kind of helping them at each step of their journey here. Okay. Now, um, New Life Centers have been around for about, what, 15 years? Can you just tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah. Just in case people aren't familiar <laughs> with it, where, where you operate because you have operated multiple areas. Absolutely. Yeah. We're a faith-based nonprofit. We're mainly on the south and west side of the city, a uh, little village to be exact, and, and Humboldt Park and Brighton Park. Um, we have an office in Pilsen, and we do five core things. Uh, real quick, I'll share is, is we first started off about 20 years ago as a mentorship group, mm. um, and that's just walking with young people, uh, ages 12 to 24, okay. roughly, uh, in, the, in the southwest side of the city, um, and just doing life on life together. So mm. that's how we first mm -hmm. started off, just being a mentorship kind of organization. We've since added a few different uh, departments, like I said. So our second pillar is our education pillar, uh, and that involves just uh, helping young children with mm -hmm. homework and field trips and uh, camps in the summertime. And so we have some after-school programming. We're, we're, our main office in Little Village is right across the street from a, a elementary school. Uh, our third pillar is our restorative justice team. And so mm -hmm. we're a team that just really focuses on uh, people caught up in the juvenile uh, court system here in Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, we have victim advocates and a team that responds to incidences of violence, um, you know, mainly nights and weekends. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's our, our third pillar. Our fourth pillar is sports programming. So we have uh, different uh, leagues. We have a, a little league that's starting up soon here in the spring. Um, we have a lot of programming for youth that we realize we live in a very dense and young neighborhood mm -hmm. part of town. And a lot of these folks want to play sports. 
Oh, yeah. Um, and there's not a lot of, unfortunately, places for them to play those sports. So how do we partner with other people in, in the neighborhood and how can we activate safe spaces for those kids to play? Um, and we've partnered with the Cubs and we do a running program that just ran the Shamrock Shuffle a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that's our fourth pillar. Our fifth pillar is our community care and that's where my team falls mm -hmm. in. Um, uh, that also involves our food pantry uh, called Pan de Vida or Bread of Life in, in English. Um, we feed about a thousand families a week. It's actually the largest food pantry in the city of Chicago by volume. Um, and then the, uh, we also do all the, the care with the new arrivals. So my team uh, walking with the new arrival as they first get to Chicago, mm -hmm. whether that means they bust here, somehow ended up here, we don't know how, like you said, doesn't matter kind of how they got here, but how do we respond and care for them? And so um, from when they first arrive to when they're ready to move on to their next home, we're kind of along the whole journey. Well, now, um I know it seems like so long ago, but uh, when the world was kind of shut down because of the pandemic, were you guys really busy during that time, especially with the food pantry and everything? And um, so as you were kind of dealing with that, were able to exhale, then this popped up, then, then, then yeah. the, the insane, the, the, the asylum seekers showed up. Yeah, there, it seems uh, lately uh, it's been one kind of crisis after mm -hmm. another in the city, in our country. Uh, we had the COVID that affected mm -hmm. a lot of people in our neck of the woods. 60623 zip code was particularly hit hard. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of folks that could not work from home. Um, they had blue collar jobs and they had to go into the mm -hmm. factory. Essential exactly. workers, yeah. <clears throat> and so uh, a lot of folks... Uh, got sick and couldn't feed themselves for, for a week or two. And so we quickly sprung up and our food pantry fed millions of people. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I should, uh, three million since COVID. Oh, um, wow. We had lines blocks long mm -hmm. of people in their cars and we would put food in their back trunk and see you later, hope you feel better and, and then come back next week. Um, well, because you've been around for so long in some of these neighborhoods that you're you're really a pillar community hub and i don't know i'm going to safe to say that you, you've been around so long that someone that might have used your services when they were a child they have children now yeah no this is true we see a lot of folks that we grew up with now have children in our programs mm -hmm. um, and that's the goal is to be a space in the community for young people people of all ages mm -hmm. to come to to find resources to con get connected to the community. Okay, now, um, actually dealing with migrants really isn't what New Life was doing. So when we met uh, at a West Side United meeting, uh, I was you know, highly curious, like, how were you picked? Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Great question. We were in Little Village, which is a predominantly mm -hmm. Mexican-American neighborhood, but over the years have seen waves of different migrants. Mm -hmm. And so late uh, before the new wave of mostly net Venezuelan mm -hmm. arrivals, it was Guatemalans, it mm -hmm. was Ecuadorians. And so uh, because we're in the heart of a, just an immigrant neighborhood and mm -hmm. community, um, and we're just a block removed from the 26th Street Business Corridor mm -hmm. where there's just hundreds of mom and pop shops and uh, people would just come to us, okay. stumble in and say, mm -hmm. hi, uh, we saw the food pantry, we'd like to get food. What other resources do you have? And, and can I get connected to a job? Do you know of someone renting a room? And we were able to help mm -hmm. in, in about four or five month period, about 40 to 50 families. Just so, so really it's like you, you, you already had like the infrastructure and the connections to do this. It's just, okay, the, 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 the birth country of the person is just different. Exactly. Yeah, we were doing it organically, mm -hmm. and uh, conversations with ha were had with, with city officials, with state officials about can we resource you, fund you to do it at a bigger scale? Mm -hmm. And we jumped in and said, "Yeah," and here we are. <laughs> well, you know what? You you, you touched on something that I'm kind of interested in because I'm, this is me personally. I've been kind of looking at the longer term picture of this and 
I look at it sort of, sometimes my friends hate me when I do this, but I say, okay, well, I wonder how Little Italy started, how did Greek town start, how did Chinatown start, how did Little Village start, mm -hmm. how did... So, is there, I know like when we had to deal, when we, we dealt with uh, a lot of the Ukrainian mm -hmm. uh, immigrants and there was truly um, a family, a community that could just mm -hmm. absorb mm -hmm. additional, they, they actually, a lot of them had family connections already. So it was, mm -hmm. so it was a lot easier as opposed to like this, which has been looked at as more of a crisis. Mm -hmm. um, so have you seen that, um, as they're getting settled that let's say there's like Guatemalan population forming um and mm -hmm. I've, I've actually wondered about you know i think you, i think when we talked you said no there's already like a little venezuela mm -hmm. development yeah 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 this is a unique time in our history here in chicago because we would not really seen a venezuelan mm -hmm. wave of, of new arrivals and and prior to 18 months ago there was roughly seven to 10,000 Venezuelans mm -hmm. living in the entire state of Illinois. Oh, wow. So now to find, uh, all of a sudden get 36, 37,000, mm -hmm. that's a lot. And so as we've moved folks into new homes, there's entire blocks and neighborhoods, little pockets of the city especially, mm -hmm. that yes, you can call them little Caracas because it's just 10, 15 families all in one neighborhood. Okay, now out of here, um, I always say that you know it, it's great to actually have an expert or someone who's lived there as opposed to someone. Well, I heard mm -hmm. that so, all right, um, a young family arrives in Chicago. Where and then what is the process? What happens to where they get to you and then what happens? Yeah, good question. So there's a whole process. Mm -hmm of steps that new arrivals take mm -hmm. when they get to Chicago. And we've worked with the city and state and a few other partners to figure it out. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it might not be perfect, but what's, that's what's in place is there's a landing zone downtown where uh, migrants are, are first arrive and check mm -hmm. in. And there's an intake center that we help run. And we process folks, we hand them out, we give a coat and food because oftentimes they don't have that when mm -hmm. they get it and so that's kind of sad but we we help meet their immediate need there mm -hmm. take some info down um if they're looking to move to other places within the city or or have family like you said mm -hmm. already here or are looking to go to a neighboring state or, or whatever there's processes in place and then the city uh if they do need shelter will move them to an available shelter that's that, that I think there's uh, 18 or so open at this time. Um, from there, they have 60 days mm -hmm. before they're then uh, asked to leave unless there's an extenuating circumstance mm -hmm. or medical or there's mm -hmm. a list of things that can prolong their stay at a shelter. Um, but after they're done at a shelter, we hope that they've been able to find a home, mm -hmm. employment, um, and, and my team also helps uh, with a, a non-existing program, unfortunately, it's, it's ended, but uh, there was a rental assistance program for a lot of new arrivals oh, wow. mm -hmm. where they got some help for uh, their new home and, and then New Life Centers has mm -hmm. a whole team that moves them in and provides a basic set of furniture. Um, and so that, I hope that answers your question yeah. of how it all works. Yeah, because I was always thought about, you know, the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the big things are, especially with, young families school mm -hmm. health mm -hmm. home work yeah and i know that there are well i know that there's you know the the issue of trying to be able to get work permits in a timely mm -hmm. manner because um it seems like a, a lot of the people they, they want to work yeah 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 that's one of the most the questions I hear the most is, hey, do you know anyone hiring? <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, and unfortunately, that's a, a federal issue mm -hmm. that um, w I have no control mm -hmm. over and a lot of our local leaders don't. Um, most of them, again, from Venezuela and, and just our diplomatic relationships with that country. 
um, being asylum seekers, and there's a whole process that's mm. unfortunately very complicated and a little pricey to someone that doesn't have a job. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a it's a whole thing. Um, we're we're able to help in, in other ways. Uh, we're able to help in uh, the we, we partner with CPS at at our shelter. We mm -hmm. we currently actually run two, and we help get uh, folks enrolled. We we partner with Cook County Health. And we help folks get to their medical appointments. Uh, there's some programming that we do at our shelter mm -hmm. to help folks w graduate, right? We really want them to see them do well in their mm -hmm. next steps. Um, and the city and, and others have other programs in place too. So, well, and, you yeah. know, and also, because community policy is about public health. And we've seen, you know, recently, you know, the measles outbreak and then just. Um, children who have been immunized poor, and um let alone women that may be maybe maybe pregnant and then just thinking about you know the 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 trek that a lot of those people took to get here had to cause in, incredible tr mental trauma um tested their bodies in terms of you know immune systems to the brink, mm -hmm. um, nutrition issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so, from, from from that perspective, because I, I think we, we talked about how well a group that's you know near and dear to my heart, the Night Ministry. Mm -hmm. How you work with them, maybe on some other stuff, but just you know, how that kind of healthcare safety net thing came together and what you're working on. Yeah, yeah, it, it, a lot of folks. You hit the nail on the head. Have a lot of issues from their journey here, mm -hmm. and stuff that they've brought from their home countries, and 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 there's a there's a lot of issues with vac vaccines that mm -hmm. they might not have available in their home countries, or their standards are different from ours, mm -hmm. and so bringing them up to speed, if you will. Yeah, I've heard that there's even <coughs> even just and this is like I heard, but mm -hmm. you know, like, even to the point of just. Um, taste in food that mm -hmm. uh, we may like um, that to them is just not palatable and yeah. we're not yeah, yeah 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 absolutely they they don't like spicy food they, a, a lot of times people think oh they're Hispanic they must love well really there's only yeah, a certain part of the Hispanic yeah. Latino population that, that likes spicy food and and if you meet someone and want to take them out to lunch and, and go Mexican they might mm -hmm. not like the spicy salsa that you choose <laughs> <laughs> yeah now um how can people help? How can people who may have the work background to help or how would they volunteer or what if they want to donate items or whatever, what is needed and how would they do it? Great questions. Yeah, lots of ways to help and we're not the only folks in town helping. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say reach out to uh, other groups as well but we have a website uh, called newvecinos.com uh, and okay. e-w-v-e-c-i-n-o-s.com yeah thank you um, where you can give financially mm -hmm. you can find out ways to volunteer uh, donate there's a list of items that we have that we purchase and we um, we we give and folks can shop and we have an amazon wish list that they can go on mm -hmm. um, and then um, there's a list for you to sign up and volunteer more uh, more frequently and the more need is at our food pantry mm -hmm. uh, okay. we've fed a lot of new arrivals mm -hmm. and continue to do so and that's an ongoing need um, but yeah find out m more ways to help and get involved at our website again uh, other great people out there in the Chicagoland area doing uh, this type of work and so you know it doesn't have to be new life get involved with uh, just a, 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 a variety of groups out there too. There's, I'm sure, um, Facebook, you can find ways to, to get involved. Well, you know what, before we, we touch back on, what about you? Okay, how did you, where, where are you from? Are you a Chicagoan? Mm -hmm. How did you get into this work? Um, <laughs> how long have you been with, with New Life? Sure, yeah, great question. Uh, born and raised in the city. Uh, and spent some time in the Chicagoland area as a, as a high schooler, went to school uh, uh, f uh, for 
uh, business in, in Minnesota and came back to Chicago, Chicago's home. Um, so you love cold weather. <laughs> yeah, I love the cold <laughs> weather. Uh, winter doesn't scare me. Okay. It, uh, I like the, the Midwest. It's home. Um, felt called to go into uh, ministry a few years ago okay. and, um, and landed at New Life Centers about uh, 10 or 11 months ago. Okay, so, so you're new. Still pr- relatively mm-hmm. new. Myself uh, come from immigrant parents. Okay. So uh, my father immigrated from Central America and my mother from uh, Mexico. And so I know the journey and, and I know the troubles that they've gone through um, and, uh, and just have been so blessed by um, their dedication and hard work to get ahead and, and just would love to see others do the same. Now, um, I want to touch on something that might be a little, not hot, but a little bit warm. Okay, there's been an outcry of like, well, okay, these asylum seekers, migrants, are taking resources away from the people that were already here. And how is New Life dealing with that balance? Or, you know, or just, just dealing with it? Yeah, great question. Yeah, it's, um, I, I will say some of these resources have been there. Okay. Uh, and, and it's either been uh, a poor job of marketing them mm-hmm. to people or uh, people just not knowing how to access them. So mm-hmm. being uh, accessible is really important to make sure that all resources and all funding and all programs are readily available and accessible to existing Chicagoans. Um, and I, I will say this through the systems and the, the work we've done in the past year, mm-hmm. we've learned a lot and that we can build them out bigger so that okay. we include everybody. Okay. Um, we're nearing the end of the show. So are, is there anything new that New Life is trying to launch our, your program? Um, yeah. Uh, not a program per se, but we are planning welcome to the neighborhood events uh, as we uh, move folks into their new home and we want to get them plugged into resources and groups. Uh, we like to have uh, events where we bring community partners mm-hmm. that exist there already and new neighbors and existing neighbors together. So our next one is May 11th mm-hmm. in the Woodlawn neighborhood at First Presbyterian um and uh and we'd love to have as many new neighbors there uh i will say we can't we only do have space for 150 (laughs) so we can't have everyone show up yeah uh but uh yeah we'll plan more of these events throughout the year we've done a handful already Mm -hmm. um so can find out more info information on our website um but uh yeah i really appreciate the time and thank you for having me oh thanks for coming and uh, i looked it up but vecinos means neighbor right correct yep so i just think that's just a really good way to just couch it it's like not it's not them Mm -hmm. these just your new neighbors um well once again andre thank you for appearing on community pulse and uh please and and i do not do this enough I want to thank uh, Rocio and Imani, the Can TV not-for-profit uh, crew, for um, making sure that we, you know, can pull this show off. Uh, I better do this because uh, actually work for them. Thank you, Hexel Institute of Medicine, for sponsoring this show, and definitely my two partners, uh, Megan Phillip, the executive director of the Healthcare Council of Chicago and to Cora Love, who runs Hectones Nurses in the Humanities Program. So once again, my name is Levi Moore, and signing off on this episode of Community Pulse. Thank you.